everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today we've got this really cool old Martin. This is a uh, Martin C2 from 1934. Um, it's got a couple of mostly setup problems. There's one other thing that's not too fun. We're going to look at it here in a second. I think I'm going to set it down and read you the note. You, know, you get an idea where it's from and what it needs. So, I'll read this note from the customer. It says... This is my dad's C2 Martin Archtop, manufactured in 1934. I've had it in my possession for over, I think it's supposed to be 50 years. It hasn't been played at all during that time. I don't remember my dad actually playing it often. I think he just enjoyed owning it. Uh, it took, I took it to the Martin Company in 1994 for evaluation and repair. The customer says, Martin changed the nut, the tuners, the, and the frets. At that point, they called me about a loose brace in the back of the guitar. They thought the glue had dried up. At that time, I couldn't afford the cost of removing the back. Martin returned the guitar as you see it today. And then we're on to things that we need to do here. He says, loose brace, and I, I can see it. There's a loose brace right inside that hole on the back. You can see where it started to lift from the back. Uh, the frets, well, he says, although Martin replaced them, I'm really surprised by the poor workmanship that was done. They're not beveled to match the fretboard radius and stick out beyond the fretboard. Please work your magic. I've noticed, I don't think Martin replaced them. Um, you know, he says, the customer says he didn't, he doesn't play his guitar, but there are some big grooves in those first three frets, and there's some beyond that. It just doesn't look like they're replaced. I mean, they might have leveled them to some degree. The frets are also lifting on the ends. They're stuck in the center, but the ends are lifting and the fretboard has shrunk. So they're sharp. They stick out. He says, uh, the neck looks straight from the first to the twelve and dips down after that. I put a straight edge on this already, and it, it is. It's very straight all the way up to here, but then it dips down. But that's really normal for an acoustic guitar. They tend to have a... I'm trying to think what, what you call it. Anyways, it slopes down right at the end. It helps you get the strings a little lower because you don't end up really playing up here. And on this guitar, you're really not going to use those frets. So they're lower. It helps you get the action lower. That's perfectly normal. Nothing to worry about there. Um, he also sent a couple of bridges with this. These two bridges. Um, he thinks this one's original, but it's really tall. I think we'll probably try to use this one because it's original. And we'll just make it a little shorter. Uh, it is ebony. It comes all the way apart, so I should be able to shorten it down and we'll keep the original bridge on it. Um, all the other parts are either around here or they're in the case, all the screws, and there's a pick guard too. Um, just hoping for a well-maintained guitar that is playable. The loose parts are in the compartment inside the case. Yeah. So that's what we're aiming for here. Uh, I think the first thing I want to start on is these frets. You can see I've got the neck support out. I'm going to try to figure out a good way to get these down in here. These frets are low, but they're not so low that I don't think we can use them. So I don't you know, want to replace them on this vintage guitar, because there's not a whole lot I really want to do to this vintage guitar, because I don't really want to you know, hurt the vintage. But, you know, we got to do some things to get it playable, and the frets are where I'm going to start, I think. So you can see here, you know, let's use the note. These, uh, yeah, frets are coming up on the ends. I can get the paper underneath of it quite a bit. It fits up underneath there, you can hear it catch. So what I'm going to try to do is find a way to stick those ends down, hold those ends down, and then just a little bit of CA glue will hold them down. I think. I just gotta figure out a good way to, uh, you know, clamp them down. So I'll uh, start thinking about that. I've already done one side and I thought I'd show you a little bit of the other. Uh, what I ended up doing here was I'm just driving them back in and they're staying in for the most part. And then I'll put a little bit of super glue on each side of it use the accelerator to get them stuck. So I've got the uh, little piece of aluminum here and it's kind of rounded on the bottom so it fits the contour of the fret. And I'm just putting the ends back down in. And then 
what I'll do is I've got a little bit of CA glue and a really thin stick. But I'll get a little bit of glue on there and I can run that right along that fret. Now, by no means does this make this perfect, but I think really the only way to get it truly perfect would be to put new frets that were, you know, radiused more in, and you may even have to super glue those down. So, it's definitely improved. Definitely worth doing. Alright, so then, so I'm done with that. Blow on it for a second, and then just spritz it with the accelerator like that. That one's done, I'll move on to the next one. It's in the way. So I don't know if you had seen this, but uh, Jerry made a metal end for my hammer after the Lindbergh when I said I didn't have a metal hammer. So now I've got a metal hammer. Uh, yeah, it was a weekend or a Friday maybe I wasn't here and Jerry made this and I came back and found it sitting here and at first I didn't know what had happened but yeah, Jerry made a new end for this over in the metal shop so I have a metal hammer over here. I don't have to go use his. In the wind that you leave Disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. Before you up and leave me, there's something you. Alright, well, I'm not going to show any more of this. I've shown quite a bit already. That was a little bit more than I wanted. So, what I'm, I'm just going to end up doing the rest of these frets. I've already done this side, you know, they're not going to come back up, I don't think. They still stick out a little bit, so we'll have a little bit of fret to file off on the sides, but it shouldn't be too bad. There's some real wonkiness going on with this nut. Uh, it's just shaped weird, so I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit. I'm just going to be using my little file and taking a little bit away. Trying to get it a little bit more uh, standard shape. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape over the finish. Just sit right down beside me. Just once before you go. Remember when we first met. We had a love so fine. It's in the wind, it's in the wind, that you're leaving me again. So I've got the bore scope out and I'm looking at the internal bracing on this Martin. Um, you know, and it looks like there seems to be a, a bit of a seam at the bottom of the brace that goes away as you get into the center. Uh, I've noticed it. A little bit more on this first brace where we really think it's loose right along the bottom of that brace. And it goes away about there. I just wanted to get a good look at these braces before I decided I was going to pull the back off or you know, something drastic. This is the next brace. It seems to be, uh, there just seems to be a bit of a seam right there, and I wonder if that's the brace coming up. I don't know that for sure. But I guess I'll have Jerry take a look and see what he thinks. And we'll see how we want to attack this. That's where we're at.
Well, I had Jerry take a look at this old Martin, and we decided we're going to take the back off. So I've got my sharp point exacto knife, and I'm starting to score around the binding on the back. After I get that done, I'm going to go through and I'll score along the side of the binding, and I'll try to get it all off in one piece. This is a very time-consuming project. I thought I'd show you just a little bit of me doing it. Maybe I'll bring it back a little bit later once I get some good progress. Well, I've been working at this for a couple of hours, and I've just now started to get it coming loose. I don't know how well you can see it. It's starting to get loose there, so I'm going to start working my way around and seeing if I can't just pop it off. But probably not, because that'd be too easy. I'll go back to really lightly. Well, now that I've got it kind of a groove, I can go a little heavier. But cutting. And I don't pry with the sharp pointed one because I'll break the tip off. That's why I grabbed the other one to kind of pry a little bit. So it broke on me right here, but admittedly that's made it a lot easier for me to get behind it and start working it off. Something else I've tried is just warming it up a little bit with the heat gun. It's turned on real low. Just getting it a little warm. No disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. I'm getting it. You can see I'm up to up to here. I'll keep working my way around. I'll bring you back once I get most of the way around or if I run into anything else. Well, I've got most of this off. You can see here. I'm up to the heel of the neck. And this is probably the hardest part because part of the binding is you know behind the heel and you can't just pull it straight out. This is going to take a little bit more finesse. That part's free from the back. There we go. Only one break, so it's all still connected. And I can start working on getting this back off. So I started working on this back. You can see I've got it a little ways, but you know, it is tight. Not wanting to come off. Just take a little time. You know not one part of this back removal is gonna be easy, and I can tell. I've got these uh, the tools heating up in the tool heater. Uh, somebody sent that to us, but I can't exactly remember who it was. But this is not going easy, to say the least. It's in the wind, 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 you win again, you win again, it's in the
let these tools warm up for a little bit more. Well, you've seen a little bit of this now. It's just going to be a pain getting it the whole way around. But, uh, you know, I'm going to work on this some more off camera. Hopefully I get a little bit further along and I'll bring you back about the time I make some good progress. Um, so I just saw this and I think I'll show it to you. I don't know how well I can show it. It's right there. You can see that brace, I think. And it's very loose from the back. So it's a good thing we're taking this off because I can see space between the brace. It's right in there. You can see it. So it's a good thing we're taking it off because that brace is very clearly loose from the back. Quite a ways in. So I'll keep working on this and bring you back when I got something else to show you. Watching the leaves fall to the ground Just like my life, they're spinning around The touch of the wind, the clouds rolling on Reminds me of when life was a song Well, you can see I got the back over here. You saw me taking it off, and it didn't come off the easiest. Um, you know, for the loose braces, you would think maybe the back would be loose, but it wasn't loose at all. But it is a good thing we took the back off of here. Um, every brace on this back is loose. This one here, here, this one's starting to be loose. That one's loose there. It's loose on this side here. This one's pretty loose there. So yeah, all of them and maybe you couldn't have seen that, but all of these braces were loose, so it is a good thing we took the back off of here. Um, I've kind of made me a little tool here. It's just a little piece of maple I thinned down really thin and then double stick taped some sandpaper to. This is so I can clean underneath the braces pretty good and keep with the uh, grain so I don't leave any weird sanding marks. I can turn it upside down and clean the bottom side of the brace as well. I thought you might want to see some of the, uh, the markings on the inside here. We actually have uh, the C2 and then I guess that's the serial number 57756. And I think it's kind of funny that they put these on here still even though it's the F hole guitar and you really can't see them. But uh, I'm going to keep working on getting these cleaned up. You know, I want to clean out any of the old glue. So I can put some new glue in there, nice and fresh. Well, I just got finished up cleaning up the last brace. And my uh, sanding tool broke. So I guess it's a good thing I got finished. Um, I'm going to try to glue these up. I'll go have to find some clamps for this. I also probably want my paintbrush to help get it underneath there. I've got some of these bigger clamps sitting around here to get into the further end spots. And you can see I've got all the leather ready to go. I just got to get glue. I'm a little low. Alright, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna find some different glue. Alright, I went and got Jerry's glue. That seems to be working well. Trying to get it underneath there a little bit more. It seems to be all the way underneath there, which is good. I got a lot of squeeze out. 
which I kind of expected. Try to get most of that cleaned up before I clamp it. Life was a song, but it's Stick a little piece of leather on top, piece of leather on the bottom. Grab one of these squeeze jobs. Squeeze leather on both sides. Squeeze down a whole bunch more glue. Now I'm going to try to stick one in a little bit further about in here. Let me try this clamp. I'm going to do the other side and then I'm going to wait a little while and move on. It's almost lunch time so I can probably get away with waiting until then after lunch. And then this should be set up well enough. So we'll turn this around. Since you go. our first brace re-glued to the back. I'm gonna let this set up while I go to lunch and then I'll come back and do the next one and so on. Looking good. I'm glad to see that I got squeezed out all the way along it. So I'll let this sit for a while. Well I'm not totally happy with how dry the uh, first one is so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to actually doing this one next. Um, that way I can just use a couple of these kind of squeeze clamps and then, you know, because that will cover the whole area I need it to. So, I'm going to try to get some glue underneath here. looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit up for quite a while now. You know, a couple of hours at least. I might come back to this uh, as like the last thing I do today, but I think we're going to let these two just totally dry and get nice and set. And then we'll come back and hit these last two braces. Well, I got these last braces clamped on here. Um... Everything goes good. That should just be a little bit of cleanup, and this should basically be ready to glue back on by tomorrow. So we'll see it later. 
Well, you can see we've got all the braces glued back on. And I've been working on getting it all cleaned up so it's looking real good when we can start working on gluing this back to the rest of the guitar. I've been working on this a little bit too. I vacuumed out the inside. And I thought this, you might find this a little interesting. They reinforced this on the inside up in here. And I thought it was kind of interesting that they didn't put any reinforcement around the parts that like to break off on the F holes. But I thought I'd give you a good look on the inside just in case you wanted to see it. So I'm just going to do a little bit more cleanup on this back. And then I'll get started gluing it back to the rest. Well Jerry came over and took a look and I think we're ready to go. Nothing else is loose. It was just those back braces. We've checked these internals and you know, kind of looked at everything. I even kind of poked around on these pieces that uh, cover the joint on the back. It really doesn't seem like anything else is loose, so I think we're ready to start gluing this up. Um, you can see I've got the guitar clamps there, ready to go. I'm going to try to get some glue going. I really don't want to put too much glue on here because I'm not going to be able to clean up the inside once the back's on. I've got this all clamped up and I've pretty much emptied the clamp box. Just a few little ones left. So I'm gonna let this set up for quite a while so I can be real sure it's good and stuck. So we'll see it after quite a few hours at least. Alright, so I've got all the clamps off the back of this Martin. Um, and I think I'm ready to start working on the binding for it. Getting the binding back on it. Uh, you can see I've got the uh, back taped on just temporarily. I was going through and cleaning up the binding slot with a the real small chisel just getting the glue out of it so I can put a different glue in it really. Alright well I've taken a good look at this and I think I'm ready to glue it on. I'm gonna use the superfatic glue. It does a good job of gluing uh, plastic to wood. It does a good job of gluing just about anything to wood. We'll use this for gluing in nuts and that, you know, the bone to the wood works pretty good. Um, I've got a paintbrush I'm kind of wetting down in some water over here. I've also got some water sitting over here. You can't really see it, but I'm going to start at this end just because I can see the seam and that's the actually the weakest point I'm seeing right now. I've also got a cloth over here I can wet down or, you know, a rag I can clean up glue with. It's going to be kind of hard to show you at first, but I'll Try to get a little way started.
Well, you just saw me tape up this whole binding. Um, I think it's looking pretty good. I am short. This plastic binding almost always shrinks. So I'll wait for this all to dry up. I mean, I get good and set. And then I will come back and clean it up and find a piece that will fit in there and look right. But I will go ahead and just let this all set, get totally dry, you know, so I can take all the tape off and clean it up real good. Do any little clean up things I need to do. And then we'll make a little piece that fits. But for now, I'm going to leave this be. Well, I've got all the tape off of here, and I thought we'd start looking for a good piece to fit in here before I did all the cleanup. And I found this piece of binding. And now that I'm looking at it, the black stripe in this is too big, so I'm going to go find a different piece with the black stripe that's about the right size. Uh, we'll find a piece that'll fit in there. I've started cleaning up the little hole. I'll zoom in a little bit. with the uh, chisel. It's actually smaller than the chisel. So, I'm just trying to clean it up so I can get a piece that's going to fit just right in there. But, uh, this piece isn't going to match very well, so I'll go find a different piece and then come back and we'll try to fit it in there. So I've got a piece here, and it's not going to focus on it. Maybe there. Um, and it matches pretty well. It's not exactly the same color, but we can fix that here shortly. Um, but it's got the right black strip, and I've already cut off a piece, and it's almost fitting. I just used the chisel, and I set it, and I... I'd like it to fit pretty snug. It looks pretty good. It's still oversized for the slot. I'll try to show you a little better. So it's fitting in the slot and it's fitting snug so I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna put some super fatic glue on it if I can get it out. Just like that. I'll we'll fit this back in there. Pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on it. Just to kind of hold it in. We'll let that set for a little while. It shouldn't take too long. Um, you know, the super fat glue sets up pretty quick. So that should just be maybe 10 or 20 minutes and then it'll be good enough for me to start working on getting it to match. Well, I'm working on getting this fit. Or, moreover, getting it shaped. I've just got my little file. Just kind of shaping it to match. It's getting close. Just a little bit of a lip there. I think it's going to look pretty good. We'll find something to yellow that up a little bit. Whether it's just a little touch of the yellow dye just rubbed on there. I think that'll probably do it. And then it should match. And unless you're looking for it, you probably won't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and do some cleanup. I'll have some water, maybe a moist cloth to help me clean this up. But we got just a little bit of cleanup to do on this. And then we can get to working on probably setting it up. Well, it's been a couple of days since I've worked on this Martin. But I'm pretty sure we were ready to start setting it up. And to get there, I've got to start putting things back on, like the tailpiece, the bridge. So I'll start getting the tailpiece screwed back on. Well, I changed my whole life. No. The screws are just spinning once I get them most of the way in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take them out and fill the holes and redrill them. I just don't like the way they were sitting in there. And it shouldn't take me too long. So I've got this sitting up here and I got some toothpicks I'm going to use to fill these holes. 
So I'll put a little bit of glue in there. Corporate strike, put your alarm clock away in the drawer. No more conference calls, and no meetings in the halls, and no business to conduct in a ball. And no self-serving boss, nor the threat of the loss of the paycheck that I've earned. I'll give those some time to set up, and then I'll come back and knock them flush, and then we'll set up to re-drill them, and that'll hold the screws in a lot better. So I've got the tailpiece on this old Martin, and I've got the bridge sitting on here. The customer sent two bridges with this, but he said that he thought this one was the original. So this is the one I'm going to try to use. Um, something else he had mentioned was it was really high. I've already sanded just a little bit off the bottom of the uh, saddle part. These little posts come out. So I took them out and sanded a little bit off. Just not a whole lot, but enough that I think it might make a little bit of difference. Um, we may have to come back and take some more off yet, but that should help us get closer. Something else I've noticed here is this uh, tailpiece loads from the front and the strings wrap around. It's got a little cup, kind of, in the front where it holds the ball in. So. The first branch of that. The strings I'm using are these uh, Martin Marquis Folk. The customer sent these with it and asked that we use them. Um, I went and checked the gauges and they sit kind of in between the custom light and the light on the Diderio ones that we typically use. So I'm okay with using these. They're just a little bit lighter than what we normally use anyway. That's okay for I've got a plan And there'll be no regret No hard feelings, no debt We're all doing the best we can So here is my last word Some may think it absurd But I know that someday you'll find It's better to leave than to stay and to grieve Instead of a paycheck, you'll have peace of mind So I've got all the strings on here and we're up to pitch. The action's low. Um, I'm not noticing any real buzzes, but it is low. I, it's really nice. Um, it's good that I got the action actually low because this is adjustable bridge, so if the uh, customer gets it and he thinks it, he'd be a little more comfortable a little higher, or maybe he has a really heavy hand and he's hitting it pretty hard, he can raise it real easy. All you gotta do is loosen the strings a little bit and turn the dials up. But where it's sitting now, I'm... Hitting it pretty good. Not getting any buzzes, so... That's good. Um, I think the one thing we still need to do this is I'm pretty sure there's a pick guard that goes on. Um, that's in the case, so I'll go ahead and grab that one, put that on here, and then this should be just about done. So I've got the pick guard. Um, I'll start with this one. Just a little flathead screw. I'm not going to get it tight, I'm just going to get it started. I can move that in place. Tighten up the line on top again. I 
There we go. Uh, the one thing I didn't check was intonation. I just put the bridge back where it was. I didn't really check, so I'll sit down and do that real quick. push the low E back just a hair, bring the high E up just a hair, not like that, I'll check it again, it's still sharp. High E is spot on, but the low E is just a little sharp still. And sharp means short. So I need to lengthen the string. There we go. Well, I think this old archtop Martin is just about done. set up and it's set up real low but it I mean it plays real good but it is very low but you know it's sounding real good it's playing real good um, one thing I did that you didn't see was I gave the top a wipe down with some boiled linseed oil which is pretty standard for an old finish um, you know, we did quite a bit of work to this thing, getting the back off of here and getting all those braces on the back glued back down because they were all loose if you remember. Um, we also reseated a bunch of the frets, shaved down the original bridge so it would fit and they would get the action playable and it's very playable and it's actually really easy to play. It's Very enjoyable. Um, I did a really light fret job. I'm not sure if I showed it. I don't think so. Plenty of other places you can see that done. Um, was really the biggest thing was getting that back off and the binding off, and that was quite a bit of work. But we got it done, and now that it's set up, I've been really enjoying playing it. And the the uh, strings are a little different. Typically, we put those phosphor bronze strings on the acoustic guitars, but these are the silk and steel, kind of like we use on the mandolins, and they give it a different tone. But I've been really enjoying this. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you did, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. If you haven't already, subscribing would be even more appreciated. Thanks for watching.